Here's this man who didn't know how to be helped. He couldn't be helped on his own. And these others that we've come across, perhaps they can't be helped on their own. Perhaps they're waiting for you, son or daughter of God, to go and give them the words of life that you carry in you because now you have become life and you've become healing because you're made one with God. Hey, good morning and God bless you saints in the name of Jesus. I just wanted to come on here and read to you a little bit of uh, the Gospel of John. I was looking at it this morning and as I was reading it, um, I just heard the desperation in this man. Uh, just to build a little context in where we're going to start, the chapter before this, we find out that Jesus goes back to Cana, uh, where he did the miracle of turning water into wine. And he ends up going to Jerusalem for the feast, and he goes to this place called um, Bethesda. It's the Pool of Bethesda by the sheep market. And in this area, there are it's full of people who are lame and hurting and destitute and in and in need of of a miracle and jesus goes in and he sees a man there laying there uh because he's been he's been sick and hurt for 38 years and that's that's what we're going to read john chapter 5 if you want to read along you can after this there was a feast of the jews and jesus went up to jerusalem now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of in, impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement, moving of the water. The angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. So whoever was the first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years it says and when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he said unto him will thou be made whole here's this man sitting by the pool waiting for the stirring of the water so he can be that he can enter and get whole from the um infirmity that he's been stuck with and, and, and suffering with for 38 years that is a long time now obviously this man wants to be made whole that's not a that's not what's in question uh the question is is he the question is does he have the means by which to be made whole and we find that there's two things that he's got that he that he that he needs there's two things and he says the impotent man answered him and he says sir i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but why am but while i am coming another steps down before me at the very least we know that he's tried to do it one time but you just hear the desperation in this man who has been trying to get into this pool to be made whole and he says i have no man I have no man that when the water is troubled, when help is near to put me into that pool, I have no man to bring me into that help. But while I am attempting to move into that help, someone comes in before me. How many of us come around people and we see do we actually, first of all, do we recognize that we, that there are people out there that are hurting and that are needing the very God that we profess to say that we believe in and live for? Do we recognize that? Do we see that there is a desire for men, for, for God to draw all men to him? Do we see that there's a desire that we can be the goodness of God, uh, an expression of the goodness of God that will lead men to repentance? He says, I have no one. I have no one to help me. I have. I see the help that I need. I see where a help could be found. And I have no one to help me. And again, Jesus said unto him, this is crazy. He says, rise, take up your bed, 
and walk. Can you imagine this? Here's this man laying down by the pool because he's been in, sick for 38 years for what, whatever the reason is. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, sick for 38 years. And he's unable to enter into the water quick enough. So there has to be some kind of physical slowdown in his in his in his person to bring to, to not allow himself to be put in that water. And Jesus says, Rise, take up your bed and walk. How do you how would you how do you think people would respond? How do you think that this man responded. I mean, obviously we know that he picks, he rises up, he picks up his bed and he walks and he, he gets made whole. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but um, what about us? When we tell people, you know, in, in, you know, when we lay hands on the sick or when we're, uh, you know, casting out a demon um, and this person has been sick and, and, and firm for so long that they're now used to it. I can't tell you how many times I go up to someone and I say, hey, do you have any pain in your body? And they're like, well, yeah, but I've been dealing with this for so long. And so I'm kind of used to it and I manage it. We don't want to be pain managers. We want to be pain takers because Jesus is the one that suffered all pain and he now lives in us. So how did this man respond? He heard the word, and he responded to it. Now, I it kind of baffles my mind, but the reason I wanted to share this is I just want us to recognize the need and the desire that we have the answer living inside of us. I heard if we, if we believe that the God who lives in us can heal every sick person and raise every dead person from the grave, uh, that could take everyone out of the wheelchair. First of all, we recognizing that there are people out there that need that. And second of all, if we really believe that, are we are we bold enough to put off the old man and put on the new and go lay hands? What if, what what else, what if you're persecuted? What if you are um, cursed at? What if that person gets healed? What if you say, you know, I understand. They're just hurting. They don't know any better. Here's this man who didn't know how to be helped. He couldn't be helped on his own. And these others that we've come across, perhaps they can't be helped on their own. Perhaps they're waiting for you, son or daughter of God, to go and give them the words of life that you carry in you. Because now you have become life and you've become healing because you're made one with God. And Jesus said, rise take up your bed and walk and it says and the and immediately the man was made whole i wonder if he had like the surge of of life that tra traveled through his person and he felt the strengthening of his bones i wonder if that's what happened first which caused him to to get up and walk would did he just stand up do we just did he just you know be at the command of this man who he didn't know who was who jesus's reputation didn't precede him in this situation because he didn't know who he was did he automatically just stand up and try to walk or did he stand up thinking that the man thinking that jesus was going to help him into the pool i i don't know that's something that you guys got to take back to to god and 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 and, and hear it. but in either case this is a figure of us there are people out there, and we know, if we really search our hearts, we know exactly where they're hurting. We know where people are gathered that are hurting. And maybe maybe you've not laid hands on the sick. Maybe you're just starting out in this walk in this in the kingdom of God. Um, it might be a good, a good idea to, to, to it, it is a good idea to come around other believers who are walking this thing, who are living this thing, who are, who are setting themselves up as an example. Now, they're not trying to be, you know, something in and of themselves. Uh, God is raising them. God is exalting them because they're searching him out in the secret place. But it might be good to, it says, the scripture tells them, mark those that are examples. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So when we go and, and we're starting out, go ahead 
and find somebody who's walking, someone who's running with this thing. And how, how, maybe they can help you. And then you can go to that place where, where you know that people are hurting and, 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 and destitute and just in need of help. I know that on you know Saturday mornings there's a pantry, a food pantry, that I plan on going to this week. Uh, and there are people there that are hurting. And uh, I intend to go there and be the life of Christ because he lives in me. It says, the life that I now live in the flesh, these mortal members that that God, the Spirit of God makes alive, um, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Jesus loves us, guys. Jesus lives in us fully. He doesn't. There's no. It, there's no separation between His spirit and your spirit. It says those who are who are joined to the Lord are one in spirit. And so, when I go to this place with to this pantry, or where, when you go to some place or wherever it is that you're, you see someone hurting, go there in the name of Jesus, and preach and and and, and bring life. You don't need to preach to them the gospel, guys. You be the gospel. And then when they ask you for the hope that lies within you, then you have an answer. How amazing is that? We don't have to, you know, we don't have to study to 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 to, to, to speak our self approved. We, we we become diligent in the in in seeking after God and then when it comes time for someone who asks us to, for the hope that lies in us, we have an answer. So I just wanted to come on here really quick. I love you very much. Uh, I just wanted to share this with you. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope it's blessed you. Um, if you're in the Columbus area and you're looking to run with somebody who's running with this thing, uh, private message me. I'll, I'll be happy to uh, to come alongside you and, and share with you. Now, I don't have everything figured out, but that's why I need to rely on my Lord also, uh, just like you do. But I will show you what that looks like for me uh, when I rely on, 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 on my Lord. Holy Spirit is our teacher, and uh, he will teach us all things. He will lead us into all truth, and Jesus is truth. So anything that you're learning and it's not leading to truth, be careful about it, because if it's not bringing a revelation of Jesus and who he is uh, for you, in you, and now, as he is now, so are you in the world, um, you might want to be cautious. I say that with love. So in Jesus' name, have an amazing day, guys. God bless you. Peace.